Well, hello. Hello and welcome to Fancy Fold Friday. And unfortunately, for a little while at least, it's going to be the last one. Uh, but I hope that you're going to like this one. So I think I've more or less saved one of the best till last anyway. But there's still loads to do. Um, and I will be continuing to do the Fancy Folds in our ordinary um, YouTube lives, which are on Wednesdays and Sundays. So you're not going to miss out too much. And it's lovely that you're all saying such nice things. Um, we've been doing them for over a year now, so 14 months. That's quite a lot of Fridays, isn't it? I don't think I've missed very many of them. Um, so it will seem funny, but the good thing is that there's loads more coming, lots of new um, and interesting things for you to all watch as well. Not necessarily on a Friday, but on other days of the week. And so it will be great for you to keep an eye out and join me on those things as well. So now, if you were with me on Wednesday, you will know that I did the lovely um, periwinkle, but we did it with the first tags. So let me just bring that one back in to show you again. We did this one on, on Wednesday, where we did the periwinkles that looked like this. But today, we're gonna to do something a bit different. And if you recall, we colored, um, the edges of all these with a little bit of ink. I'm going to do it a bit different for you today. So this is the die set. And I, again, I know loads of you have it, so it's brilliant that you do. And it's good now that you have actually probably got it in your hands, that you'll be able to have a look and see what you could achieve with it, which is lovely. But at the same time, then we will be showing you different things that you can do with it. And if you haven't got it, pop yourself over to the website maximumcrafts.com and you will find some of these sitting there waiting just for you. Okay, so colours. Colours I've chosen today are on the sort of purpley bluey range, purpley pinky range I should say. So I have got um, from crafts to linen card, I have got the violet and the lilac. And I've also got a piece of card from, oh, do you know, I'm not quite sure where it's from. Where did I get that one from? Well, a paper pad, basically. I think it's probably one of the Perfect Partners ones from the purple one. Perfect Partners in purple. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's uh, it's... A nice combination. And the dies that I will be using, I've got my lovely periwinkle here. So I'm going to be using that one. And I've also brought in a little bit of Aundel. Remember that one from last year? Aundel. So that is one of them as well. Um, I've got, you probably can sneakily see some of the small twigs up here as well. So I've already cut those out ready to go. Um, so let's make a start. Now, I'm going to make the card first. So you can see I haven't got a card blank because I'm going to make the card out of the card this time. So no card blank, but we're going to be ending up with a card which is a six by six at the end of the day. So I'm going to take my darkest colour first and I'm going to trim that. So I want to, as always, I've tried and I think I've succeeded, that when I'm doing the fancy folds, they're all made from an A4 piece of card. I've tried not to go bigger because I know it's much more difficult for you to um, get hold of that. So here is our piece. And because if we fold this in half, the measurements will be 14.8. Now, whoever thought that they should do, why didn't they just do it by 15? I just, well, whatever, anyway. It would have been so much easier. But it's 14.8 if I fold this in half. So therefore, to get a square, I need to do the top bit by 14 and a half. So hopefully you'll see what I'm whittering on about in a minute. Won't you miss all these measurements come next Friday? So I'm going to take the edge of my piece of card to the 14.8 on my trimmer. And I'm going to trim that piece off. So we won't need that piece. So, whoops, there is my piece. Now, I'm simply going to fold this in half. So 
I'm not going to bother scoring it. I'm just going to do that by eye, by eye, and just fold that piece in half. So we've now got a piece which will be, now you can see what I meant about the 14.8. It's 14.8 that way, 14.8 that way, giving you a nice square. So now I need to do a little bit of trimming. So I'm going to turn it round and open it up again. I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to measure down the very bottom halfway. So halfway between 14.8 is 7.4. So oh, don't want to do it with a pen really. We'll do it with a pencil. So I'm going to make a mark on the very bottom edge of the front of the card at 7.4. Okay, so that gives me a little edge there. Now, from your point of view, I'm going to draw in the lines, but ordinarily I wouldn't do it. I would just take it to a trimmer, but I will draw the lines in for, for you anyway. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to go from the point of where the first fold is down to this point that I've put marked as a halfway point, and I'm going to draw a line. And you can't see it anyway, can you? You can if I go like that, so down there. And then I'm going to do exactly the same on this side. I'm going to go from this corner here to that point there and draw another line. So let's just get that in. So I've got that on the front. OK, then I'm going to take my guillotine because that's how I prefer to cut this one. And I'm going to. So this is. Remember, this is the cutting edge. This bit here is the bit that's actually going to cut this very edge of this silver piece. So I'm going to put my card in so that that line that I've just drawn is running down that, that edge. So in other words, the point that I've got down here, which you can hardly see, the point that is the point there and the folded edge there is going to be parallel on my... Um, cutting edge there and then I'm going to take my trimmer and trim that down okay so that's like that so then I'm going to turn that round and I'm going to do exactly the same so the point is on my cutting edge and I just wiggle it around so that the point is at the same at the top and then pop that down so I've now got a piece of card that looks like that and two little pieces here which I will, both, I will need both of them. So I'm going to pop that to one side. Now, then I'm going to take my piece of patterned paper and I'm going to cut this out so that this is 13.8 by 13.8. So it's a whole centimetre smaller all the way around than my card was. So 13.8 by 13.8. And I'm going to do virtually exactly the same. I'm not going to fold it, but I'm going to do a bit of measurement. So I'm going to make a mark down the bottom here on my piece of paper where this, so 13.8, 13.8, half of that is quite a little bit. Um, 6.7, I think you'll find. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Is it six and a half? No, not six and a half. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> six point, six point whatever. Six point eight. Six point eight point nine. Something like that. Let's just check. Six point nine that way. Six point nine that way. It's six point nine. OK, so then I'm going to cut, uh, draw along these lines as well. So now I need to go from the point up here to my point down there. And again, the same on this side, from the point up here to the point down there. And take my trimmer and do exactly the same. So my point here needs to be along this cut line down to this point here. So then we know that that is cutting that nice and steady. And then turning it round and doing exactly the same. So from the point to the point. Now, 
one more piece to cut out. I need to take my lilac piece and pop that in. And that too needs to be cut to 13.8 by 13.8. Okay. So let's pop this together and you will see what a lovely fancy fold this is. Well, I think, I think it is. So first of all, I'm going to put the inside piece. So my inside piece is going to go inside the card here. So this is the lilac colour. And I'm just going to pop this. Um, I think I said that, didn't I, already, that it's craft artist. I meant to say that. By the way, I'm going to change my website bit over for the craft artist um, linen card. Um, I hope to do that over the weekend. And what I want to actually do over the weekend is make it so that you can choose any four colours. Um, I think that will make sense rather than have to choose which colours that are got bop together. So this piece here is going to go on that panel there. And you may have thought that it's a bit of an odd, you know, why didn't she use flowers and why didn't she use a, a, a more um, a different type of paper? But I very rarely use these checks. And actually, if we're not looking at them as the focal point, they're really pretty. So that goes there. These little devils go onto my corner bits here. So. I just need to make sure that I've got glue right down to that very point. So I'm just going to pop a little bit, move that into the corners with there. Pop that onto there. It gives that a nice little border all the way around with that and with this one. I don't even know what you call this card. Can't now I come to think of it. Um, I have seen them um, and I have to say I've no idea who I've necessarily seen do these to start off with and I've adapted it slightly so um, I don't know whoever came up with it but there you go. So now we're going to pop our card together now and our card is going to go like this so it's going to be crossed over like this but there's a little trick when it comes to crossing these over we need to make sure that the two points down the bottom here are parallel with that point so that they should be exactly on that same length so when you pop that down your middle point should be reaching right down to the center so these need to be on there as well but at the same time these points up here need to be in as well so they need to be within your card we don't want them poking out like that okay they need to be within it so if you line up so that this point is down on the bottom and that point is on that that edge you know that you will two things get it in the right place and also then these points here will not be stuck up over the edge because we want to make it look symmetrical and into a proper card so I'm first of all going to put a bit of glue just at the top of this one, just so that I can get that into position. And as I said, I make sure before I stick it down that my point, this bit is on this line and that one is on that line. And then just stick that down. And as you can see, it doesn't go over the edge then. And I'm going to do the same with that. So we put it down so that this bottom bit is on the bottom edge. That bit is exactly on the side edge. Let's wiggle it down into position. And then that goes on the top there. Like that. So that. Now, this is the clever bit. It then will stand up. And you can't see it. <laughs> it will then stand up like that. It, if only you could see. You can't see it all, can you? Can you see it like that? You'll be able to see in the photograph later, but it does look so pretty. You have got room to write inside here your message. 
if you wrote it at the top part, then you would not be able to see it so well, which would be better. So because obviously you can see these corner bits here, which you'd rather not do. So you can see that it is a fancy fold to finish all fancy folds, eh? Yeah. <laughs> so a diamond point card. I can't say I noticed that that it was what it was called. I've no idea. We called it a diamond point card if you like, June. That sounds good to me, a diamond point card. So now we've got to do some embellishments with it, though. Um, and this is where, um, let's just do this little bit first. So this is my oundle, and I'm going to take um, my dark colour, I think. Yeah. Um, hold on a second. Let's grab my dark colour again. Oh, grab my violet because I want to cut that out of my violet. So I'm just going to trim, take the outer piece of the oundle onto my card and just cut one of those out. I think it just sort of finishes it off. And instead of giving it, just instead of using an ordinary circle, which you could use, I just thought I fancied a fancy edge. So that's what we're going for. You can see that this cuts this out rather beautifully. And we're going to pop that onto there like that so I can stick that down already actually and so this is going to be my base for my flower to go on so I'm just making sure that the points on this one are in the right place that they're sort of as straight as I can get type of thing like that and that again is going to give us a nice base to put my flower on in a minute so let's put that to one side I've got the inner part of the oundle because I'm not 100% sure whether I want it or not. I think I'll cut it. I'll cut it and we can then decide. You can advise me. My chief advisors can be advising, can you not, as to whether we need it. We don't know yet. We don't know. Let's just, whoops, get another piece of tape. Let's not be so frugal. Dear, oh dear. Let's just let's just get it properly. Right. Let's just run that through. Not hundred percent sure whether I want that on there or not. So we will we will see. But it's all all okay. As I said, you could use just circles for this, but I just felt that this one I haven't used for a while. And I thought, well, so the idea is that that would fit in there. But whether we go with that or not, I'm going to put it to one side because we haven't decided yet. But it's all ready to go if we have. So now I'm going to take a piece of card. And I'm just going to cut that down so that that is just fitting there. So that's about a quarter of an A4 piece. And I've used the same of the lilac colour so that we can match all of that. So that goes nicely. So then I'm going to tape this into position. I'm going to be careful that I don't tape over anywhere where it's showing the actual um, pattern here where we cut out I mean ordinarily you could put a bit of tape wherever but I don't want to because I want to ink through my dye before I actually cut it so before we waited until we got the dye and then we started fiddling about with it but we're not going to with this so I'm taking because I'm using the mauve colors I'm taking the seedless preserves in the distress ink and I'm picking a load of that up with my um, blending brush. And I am going to go over quite heavily all of the designs that I've got in here. So you can see it's quite a dark color, but I want it to be a dark color. 
So I can't go over every single flower like this because there are two that you can't see through, okay? But the, all of the ones that you can see through are going to be dosed with ink within an inch of their lives. I'll turn that around. And so if you're sort of not into fiddling too much with the flowers or um, in the ink side of things, this probably is the way to go for you. <clears throat> So just inking all of them through there. You will, of course, need to wash your, wipe your um, dye off once you've done this. Otherwise, you'll get mucky. We don't want to get mucky. So diamond point, we reckon. Is, is that what it's called? Okay, diamond point. That's just about sort of, says what it is, isn't it? And I've certainly seen a load of them over Facebook and Pinterest and goodness knows what, but I think that they really are good. So let's pop that to one side. We don't need that anymore. So now, now that I've put all of those things through, now I'm going to put that onto my cutting board. I'm going to put it that way around because it goes through my machine like that. But before I do do that, I'm also going to grab myself a piece of paper to put over the top because I haven't taken the ink off yet, obviously, from my die. And I don't want it to go all over my other cutting board because otherwise the next time I use it, I'm going to get ink over everything. So I'm just putting that over there to protect it, really. Nothing else. OK. So let's just take these off, take the tape off and get the poster tip stick and we will then reveal how pretty is that. Isn't it lovely? I think it's one of the best ways to do this flower. That's why I saved it until today because I really, really like doing the flower like this. So very easy to do. Anyone could colour it like that and anyone could come out with beautiful flowers like that. Now, as I said, there are two little diddly ones in here still, which obviously haven't been done, but I'm not going to go down that smaller today and we've also got the lovely um thingy bobs you know stamen-y type of things and again I'm not going to use those today either but they would look fab with this as well so let's just take them all out and I'm so you couldn't get any more out of that piece of paper could you an A6 piece of paper and you've got all of that so don't forget, we need to wipe that off. I am just going to take the worst off because I know what it'll be like. I won't remember. So I'm just going to take the worst of that off. So now we get to actually uh, mould these a little bit. So we're going to mould them in exactly the same way as I did before. I'm not going to put any, ink, any um, spray on them. I'm just going to fold them so that they're sort of folded in half, as, as we say, but the actual petals themselves will just go because you've already got those two little slits. So let's get them in order so we know. I've gone for the wrong order, but still. It makes such a difference, doesn't it? And you could make all these look really very, very different just by putting different colours. Um, you could... I've done some lovely green and yellow ones, um, orange and yellow, really striking. And I think that they just, as I said, if you're not into sort of going around each one, putting a little bit of ink on here and the ink on there, um, I think that these work beautifully. So just going to fold these all up like so. So 
So I'm using the first four sizes, not the little one. Purely, really, in this case, because I think, well, two things. One is the, the four sizes works, but these little ones haven't got any ink on. And I just wanted to keep the um, design going. So just pinch these all together. Oh. Mm -mm -mm. And then this little one. So these would look so lovely in absolutely any colour. And I just think the sky's the limit with these. Really lovely. I'm going to whoops, use my glue glaze to pop these together. So I'm going to make one big flower with these. So a little bit of glue glaze in the centre and then offsetting my petals. Let's grab my tool to... I can use this. To hold that bit in the centre just whilst it grabs and then just mould all these the same way. So again a little bit of glue in the centre, offset the petals from the layer below, just hold that down a second, coming up. I'm not, I should think, I'm not sure, but I don't think that um, Carol is looking today because um, she'll probably be at work at the moment. But she reckoned that this is called a ranunculus and I reckon we'll call it that. <laughs> so, hold on. So lots and lots of pretty, pretty leaves. but it's still only cut from one piece of card. I know that they take their sort of, they take a little while to do. Um, oh, excuse me. They take a little while to do, but they just, I don't know. I just love making flowers. And I just think they look wonderful. Now, I'm not quite sure whether I'm going to go with that very, very top one there. No, I think I'm, I'm going to stop there and I'm going to grab myself a little jewel. Oh, it says that I am picks up all the other colours but the one that I wanted. You can almost guarantee that, can't you, eh? Almost guarantee that's what I was going to do. Oh, still can't find the right colour. You can imagine that, can't you? It was the very last one that I went to. The very last one. And I'm going to pop. Oh, open it up. I'm going to pop one of these mauve ones in here. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue in there just to give this an extra chance. And I'm going to go with that colour there right in the center to hold that down whilst it grabs as well so let me just what i wanted to do bring in my card again my diamond point card i think we do want that actually there i think we do what do you reckon i think we do so then my little card is going to go there. We've got some lovely little twigs. I want to stamp on here first. Now I had got a stamp, but I don't think that this is going to be... Hmm, it's going to be too big. It's going to be too big. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'll go for a little bitty one instead. Now this could be fun because I'm aiming to do it directly onto here. Yeah, that'll be good. 
So this is with a VersaFine Claire. And I just want to pop that down. Onto there, where it says bootiful. Of course, it is bootiful. And then, try not to touch it too much much because it might be a bit wet oh bring my card back in pop that onto there and my flower now first of all I'm going to pop a couple of the um twigs in and just have a look how we're going so yeah so I'm going to pop these two as my base, so just a little bit of glue there, coming out that way, and one coming out this way. And then take some of the little ones, and we have one going up. that way. Now as I said before I know you're supposed to build these up and put the twigs in afterwards but I don't, whoa, I don't do that. I do it before. But however you wish. I'm going to do just a little one or two. Just, oh, coming down the bottom. So I'm making a little bed up really for it. So I cut the four pieces out twice. Um, just making the little bed for my beautiful ranunculus to go in the centre, like that. Just get that to grab. So there we go. There is the fancy fold to end all fancy folds, eh? Um, so. It's, we're calling it a diamond point card. Um, I will put the measurements up on the YouTube after this for you to be able to see, because do give it a go. It's a really fun card. And although I've put a flower in the center, you could do anything. You could just put your happy birthday, could easily be a man's card just with happy birthday written in the center. Um, you know, it or with a flower for that matter. It really doesn't matter. Use up some of your old papers, or you could even have just done the same colour card as I did at the background. That could have been at the front. Um, it's just a really fun way of making something look very, very nice. And our beautiful periwinkle cut. Um, I'm calling it relunculus, but uh, <laughs> our periwinkle with our small twigs as well. So if there was anything on there that you caught sight of, you could pop over to the as seen on TV section it is at the moment um, for the uh, flowers or anything um, or John next door or have a good old search, have a good old look around. You never know what you might come across. So as I said, I will be back this Sunday, Sunday morning, which will be the 2nd of May, and I'll be bringing you the kit, the card kit for May. So if you fancy coming and having a look, do pop over at 11 o'clock. You will get a reminder if you have subscribed to the YouTube video, and you'll also get a reminder if you're on the Facebook group as well. Um, so do have a look over there. Um, and as I said, thank you very, very much for joining me every Friday, as you have done, because I know that many of you have joined me every single time. And I really, really appreciate that. So thank you very much. And um, I will see you on Sunday. Take care till then. Cheerio.